brothers and sisters. Dear beloved, this morning I want to thank you for tuning in to our live YouTube channel. And we thank God for this wonderful Sunday morning. We praise Him for His mighty presence and His Holy Spirit that guides us in everything we do. We thank God for life and life and abundance. This morning, I'm going to read for you, read a message from the Chronicle titled, Nothing Will Harm You. Look, I have given you the authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Luke 10 verse 19. In life, many things happen to all of us. If we don't get hurt, we are cheated or lied about or abused in some way. When this happens, most of us are not prepared to handle these negative situations. However, it is time that we find out how to put God's power to work for us when something does you wrong. So let us consider some keys to effectively deal with the challenges of life. Key number one, we must identify the real enemy. We think that the enemy is a person that caused us harm or injury and we then become angry with a person. But that person is being influenced by Satan. It is Satan behind the hard heart. Key number two, go after Satan and not people. Once you have identified the enemy, it's Satan with God's word. Speak out the promises from the Bible. In the name of Jesus, bind Satan from to further harm and render him powerless. Key number three, Pray for the person who did you wrong. Next time someone hurts you, put God's power to work. Identify the real enemy. Then deal with the situation according to God's word and not your emotions. Declaration of faith. Through him I overcome all the power of the enemy and boldly declare that nothing will harm me. In Jesus' name, Amen. I would like you to now... Grab a hold of a pen and paper as we welcome Pastor Ricardo who will give us the word for this morning. Amen. Thank you very much. Wow, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Welcome to our broadcast. We are truly excited about what the Lord is doing and what the Lord has in store for you. So praise God, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to, as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of the Lord for us this morning, just to open up in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your Son, our Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord God, for every person that is watching us, O Lord God, by whatever means, Father, those who are listening, O Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus, let the anointing of God, Lord God, touch them. I pray, Father, that the Word of God will come forth with clarity and with power, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for those, O Lord God, who are left without hope. I pray that hope will come to them. I pray for those who are filled with discouragement. I rebuke every spirit of discouragement in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare in Jesus' blessed name that the people of God will be encouraged, that they will, O Lord God, be built up, O Lord, rooted in the Word of God. I pray this day in the name of Jesus, Almighty Father, that you'll clothe them with strength from on high, O God, in Jesus' blessed name. I pray that faith will come to them now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you now, Father, that there'll be no hindrances, no disturbances, Father, to the flow of your word this morning. In Jesus' blessed name, O God, I pray, Father, that you'll anoint my vocal cords, O oh Lord God, to declare your word to your people in the name of Jesus. I thank you now, O oh Lord God, for your goodness, your grace, your love, and your mercy. Thank you, my God, for the power of your word this morning. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Welcome once again to our broadcast this morning. It is indeed 
a glorious day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it as the Bible says. I want to this morning, I want to um, speak to you along the lines of God has got you covered. Hallelujah. So if you can say that with me this morning and just say, God has got me covered. Hallelujah. You are covered by God 24-7. Praise God. Now if we go to the book of Genesis, when you look at Genesis the 37th chapter, um, we encounter a man of God and I want to speak to you about him this morning. It's a man of God by the name of Joseph. And I believe that I'm speaking to many Josephs out there this morning. Praise God. Many of you are familiar with the life of Joseph. Many are many of you are familiar with the accounts that occurred in Joseph's life. So just to glean a little bit from the life of Joseph, we know that uh, Joseph as a young man he had dreams and God had given him dreams and he shared these dreams with um, with his with his siblings with his brothers and his brothers uh, the Bible says they got a bit angry they got a bit offended and they got in fact they were actually jealous of Joseph when he began to share his dreams so much so that they began to nickname him and they tagged him and called him a dreamer. And that may be you this morning. God has probably given you a dream. He's given you a vision. God has probably given you a word. And you find that through sharing that, you've kind of stirred up the hearts of people. And you find that you have probably been facing a lot of opposition. And you've been facing a lot of challenges as a result of that. You probably have been tagged as well as a dreamer when you, you know, you... You share what God has laid on your heart and people say, ah, oh, you're just dreaming, trying to wash off your dreams. And you find that even uh, Joseph's um, father, also when Joseph shared his dream, his father too got offended. But praise God for dreams, praise God for his word, because the word of God is true and it will come to pass. And I, I, that's my word to you this morning. Every word that God has given you is coming to pass. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now when we look at the life of Joseph, the dreamer, he shared, with his, he shared his dreams with his brothers, as I mentioned. And his brothers became offended and they started tagging him. And one day when he was sent out to go and see how, it is, how his brothers are doing in the field, and they saw him coming from afar off, they began to plot against him. And they decided that they would, um, they would take him and they would throw him into the pit. And that could be you this morning. Probably you've been thrown into the pit. And you find that, you know, the amazing thing is that when God gives you a word, when God gives you a dream, when God gives you a vision, it is beautiful, it is glorious, similar to the coat of many colors which um, Joseph received from his father. And his brothers envied him. And that's the thing about people, strangely, is, uh, strangely enough, is that people will speak against something that is moving. You know, when water is stagnant, it, 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 it kind of has a stench, a foul stench. It actually has a foul smell. And, um, you know, people are okay with that. As long as you're doing nothing, people are okay with that because they want you to stay where you are. But the minute you start moving and you start pursuing your God-given assignment, you find many, very often people get stirred up and people you know, do all sorts of things and they want to take your dream now. They want to take your dream, take your word, take your vision and rip it to pieces and dip it in the blood and throw you into the pit and leave you there for dead. And that is what Joseph's brothers did. And you probably, friend, you've, you've had some dreams, you've had some visions and you've had um, word from God. And probably through sharing it, you know, life's experiences have, have, have kind of put you into the pit. But praise God, you don't have to stay in the pit because God is about to raise you up and take you out of that pit. Praise God. Now I want to pick up this morning in the book of Psalms, uh, in the 105th chapter of the book of Psalms. And I want to read verse number 19. And the Bible speaking about Joseph now says, until the time that his word came to pass. 
the word of the Lord tested him. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. That is speaking of Joseph. You know, Joseph, friends, received a word from God. He received a dream from God. And until that time that the word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The um, Amplified Bible puts it as such. It says, until the time that his word of prophecy regarding his brothers came true, the word of the Lord tested and refined him. Praise God. So that means when you receive a word from God, when you receive a, a dream from God, a vision from God, the word of God will refine you. There is a, there, there's a process of refining. It will not happen easily. It will not happen easily. Understand this, friends. It will not happen easily. It is a process. Transition is a process. When you're changing from where you're at to where God wants you to be, it is a process and it's part of the process. But praise God, God doesn't leave you alone. God empowers you. And that's the thing. You've got to hold on to the word of God. Hallelujah. And the book of um, Second Peter, I want to share with you Second Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 19. Um, speaking about the prophetic word. The word of God is truly prophetic. Everything that the word of God speaks concerning your life, everything God has said concerning your life, friends, I believe it's coming to pass. Every word that God has given you is coming to pass. So don't you give up. Don't throw in the towel. You've come too far to throw in the towel. You cannot give up now. Hallelujah. And that's a word to you this morning. The Bible says we just read until the time that his word of prophecy regarding his brothers came to pass. The word of the Lord tested and refined Joseph. So you are being refined. Hallelujah. Like gold. You are being refined like silver. You are going to come out pure. Hallelujah. Pure for the goodness of God. For the glory of God. Second Peter chapter number 1 from our uh, verse 19. The Bible says, so we have the prophetic word made more certain. You do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and light breaks through the gloom and the morning star arises in your heart. The, um, the New King James puts it like this. I'm going to read through to verse number 21. The Bible says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Hallelujah. You don't, you don't need to run around looking for a word. You have the prophetic word right there with you. It's called the word of God. The Bible says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well. Watch. Which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. God has given you a prophetic word. And the word that God has given you, friends, yes, there will be dark times in your life. You, you are probably going through a dark moment right now. But praise God, even in the dark, the Lord is my light, the Bible says. God is your light in the dark. You are not in the dark. Praise God. The Lord is your light. The word of God is your light. Hallelujah. He says, so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Hallelujah. That means that dark times do not last. Dark times do not last, friend. Whatever word God has given you, whatever dream that God has given you, hold on to that dream. Hold on to that word. Don't let it go. Don't lose your grip on it. Don't lose your handle on it. Hold on tightly to it. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. The Holy Spirit, you know, probably you were sitting in a service 
or you were sitting somewhere and you received a word from God. And that word is anointed with power. The same spirit who wrote this word is the same spirit who's releasing this word into your spirit. Praise God. And you find now the Holy Spirit is a spirit of motion. He's a spirit of movement. And it is the Holy Spirit that will give you a word that will shift you and move you from where you're at to your God-given destiny, to your God-given assignment. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you must understand that although you're in a pit, sometimes you find that people get into a pit and then they have pity parties. No, you are not a pity party. You are not a basket case. Praise God, you are a God case. I said to you, God has got you covered and God watches over you 24-7. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 121, the Lord our God, he does not sleep, nor does he slumber. He's not asleep. God doesn't go to sleep. While you're sleeping at night, God is busy working on your tomorrow. So you don't have to lay awake at night and start worrying about what tomorrow holds because you know the one who holds tomorrow in the palm of his hand and he's working on your tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happened to you yesterday. It doesn't matter what probably happened to you this morning. But I believe that there's something Something good coming your way. There's something new coming your way. His mercies are new. Every morning, praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says here, holy men of old spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit moved a man of God, a woman of God to release a word to you. And as a result of that anointed word, you understand, you all of a sudden begin to change. God never gives you a word at your level. If you are in a pit, it will be of no use if God gave you a word that will keep you in your pit. God will always give you a word that is higher than where you're at because that is what the word of God does. The word of God, like a magnet, will pull you up, pull you up into glory, pull you up into what God wants for your life, what God has designed and fashioned for your life. So don't let go of the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This word Brothers and sisters, this is the prophetic word. And you've got to hold on to this word. Because though you go through dark times, it's the word of God that will shine. It's the word of God that will cause your day to dawn. I've got news for you. Your day will dawn. Your day, your day is going to break forth. Your morning is going to break forth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share just briefly just a few pointers with you. Hallelujah. Point number one, the word of God in you is bigger than where you at and it's bigger than the assignment of than the opinions rather of everybody around you. The word of God is bigger than where you at and it's bigger than the opinions of everybody around you. Consider Jonah. Hallelujah. Just looking at the life of Jonah. Jonah got onto the boat. He got onto the ship. What was Jonah carrying? Jonah had received a word from God. And that word was a word that was for the entire city of Nineveh. God gave him a word for a city. And Jonah got onto the ship. And all of a sudden, the ship, became the weight on the ship was too heavy and yes i understand that jonah yes he was disobedient he ran away from the call of god he ran away from his assignment but something else to you know think of it this way jonah carried a word in him that was a word for an entire city that means when Jonah got onto that boat, when Jonah got onto that ship, it wasn't just Jonah, it was the word of God in Jonah for a city of Nineveh. So that means the entire city of Nineveh got onto that boat and that's what made the boat too heavy that the boat almost sank. I'm here to tell you this morning that the word of God in you is bigger than your situation. It is bigger than your circumstance. It is bigger than the opinions of people around you. 
Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. You carry within you a dream from God. You carry within you a word from God. And it will come to pass. Praise God. So, hallelujah. Friends, don't give up. Don't give up. And even if it may seem as though, yes, you're being tossed over, praise God for the whale. You have a whale that will carry you to shore safely. Hallelujah. That you'll get to fulfill your God-given assignment. God has got you covered. 24-7, He's got you covered. Point number two that I want to make is that when God gives you a word and when God gives you a dream or a vision, you must expect opposition. To come your way. Praise God. Opposition will come. It will not be something that not everybody is going to celebrate you. Not everybody is going to celebrate the dream that God has given you. Not everybody is going to celebrate the word that you have from the Lord. You must expect opposition. But when it comes, do not be despondent. Hallelujah. Do not be despondent. Don't become discouraged. Opposition is part of your transition from where you are at to your God-given destiny, to your God-ordained destiny. Hallelujah. So, through opposition, you will grow. Through opposition, you will grow. Look at this. Joseph, as a young man, a young boy, and he had a dream. In fact, he had two dreams. And his brothers began to look at him and thought, and they also probably thought, ah, this one, this one's a bit too proud. He's too arrogant. This one is a show-off. That's what they probably thought. And they began to, you know, caucus and speak amongst themselves. So they were offended because of his dreams. But you must understand that although Joseph was just a young boy, the garment and the assignment that God had for him was far bigger than where he was at. So opposition actually is good in the sense that it helps you to grow into this garment of this glorious future that God has for you. You've got to grow into it. It is something big. It is, listen, it is not about you. It is about it is about God effecting a nation through you. And when God does that, when God gives you a dream, when God gives you a word, it is so huge that it's going to take time for you to grow into it. The point, the third point I want to make is that adversity is what causes you to grow out of your small present into your glorious garment that God has prepared for you. Adversity is what causes you to grow out from your small present into your glorious and great future. Look at Joseph once again. Joseph gets to Egypt. In Egypt, we find that Joseph goes to the house of Potiphar. When he gets to Potiphar's house, Potiphar, Joseph was actually a slave, but he gets to Potiphar's house. And Potiphar makes him chief in charge over everything that he, that he has, except his wife. And that's what Joseph said to Potiphar's wife. Joseph was a man who was faithful to God. He was faithful to his master. He was a man of integrity. And when Potiphar's wife desired to sleep with him, he ran. He left, he left that house. And he ran because he knew that honor to God he honored the God that he served. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we find that Potiphar's wife fabricated a case against him. And then Joseph ends up in the prison. When he gets to the prison, they make him chief in charge over all the prisoners. So you see that? Adversity. You see, that was training for Joseph. You don't find that when Joseph got to Potiphar's house or when he got to the prison, you don't find Joseph was moaning. He didn't have monolitis like many people have monolitis. You get tonsillitis and you also get monolitis. People are always moaning all the time. And you feed on that and you understand monolitis is something catchy. Don't catch it. Hallelujah. Safeguard yourself against monolitis. Joseph kept himself. He kept himself and he kept 
Listen, he held on to those dreams. He held on to that word. And that's the word I'm giving you this morning. What God has given to you, hold on to it. Praise God. Because it's preparing you for something greater. And then we find that Joseph from the prison now all of a sudden, he goes and stands before Pharaoh, interprets the dream and he becomes governor. He becomes governor in a land that he was actually a slave. <laughs> Praise God. That is, that is God. That is the word of God at work. That is the spirit of God at work. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when adversity comes your way, don't cry about it. Don't moan. Don't complain. Praise God. Listen, you praise God because of who he is and what he's going to do for you in that thing. Amen. The thing is, no matter how deep, this is point number four, no matter how deep your pit may be, no matter how low the dungeon of that prison cell is, God has got you covered. God will get you out of that prison. Remember Paul and Silas. In the prison they weren't crying. They weren't having a pity party. They were praising God and singing hymns unto God and God came through. Listen, wherever you are at right now, God is working. He's working in your favor. He's working on your behalf. You may not be able to see it. And the reason why you can't see it is because you're focusing on your natural. You're focusing on what's happening around you. You are too focused about your story. So, Get your mindset off your story and get your mindset on his glory. Don't look at your story. Look at his glory. See the glory of God. Pursue his glory. The, his glory is his presence. Hallelujah. So don't look at your story. Begin to look at his glory because God is about to be glorified in that situation. God is about to be glorified in that circumstance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know, um, I'm just reminded now of there are times, you know, during our services where the glory of God would show up and we find that, you know, sometimes people who are depressed, when the glory of God shows up, when the presence of the Lord shows up, the joy of the Lord shows up, the depression leaves. The depression leaves. Why? Because your focus is no longer on what's happening in my life, but it is focused on the one who's the author of my life. So keep your eyes on his glory. The Bible in the book of Colossians tells us, set your mind above. Set your mind on things above where Christ is seated. Hallelujah. That's Colossians chapter number 3. So set your mind on things above. Don't mind earthly matters. Focus on heavenly matters. Heaven is where you come from. You are a citizen of heaven. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. Glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says that no flesh will glory in his presence. That's why when you focused on His glory and His glory is there, everything of the flesh must move. Everything of the flesh must give way. Praise God. So God has got you covered, friend. Hallelujah. That's my word to you this morning. You see, whilst you are being thrown into the pit, God has already spoken to some Ishmaelites to come and bail you out. I see your caravans coming. Your caravans are on their way. God will bail you out of your pit. Praise God. And God will get you out of that prison. Praise God. Whilst you may be in the prison, God is working on your release. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas were in the prison. And God was working on their release. And they were released from the prison. Amen. The same with Peter. While he was in prison, God was working on his release. So no matter where you are at this morning, no matter what's happening in your life this morning, the news is that God is busy working in your favor. He's doing something on your behalf. Praise God. Amen. I'm reminded of the man Elijah, the man of God, Elijah. Elijah, the Bible says the ravens would come and feed him. He would be fed daily by the brook. And when the brook began to dry out, Elijah didn't get worried. The Bible says the Lord said to him, get up now. The brook is running dry. God says, get up now and go to Zarephath. I've already commanded a widow woman to prepare for you. So when your brook is running out, friend, God is working on your provision. 
You may be looking at your purse this morning or you're looking at your wallet this morning or you're looking at your bank account this morning. I'm here to tell you your bank account will do nothing for you. Money can do nothing for you. Silver and gold can do nothing for you. There is one, his name is God. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider. God will provide for you. Hallelujah. So don't focus on what's running out because replenishment is coming. Provision is coming. The book of Job says when they say this casting down, you will say exaltation come and he will lift up the humble person. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God is busy working in your favor. There may be a Haman in your workplace. I'm looking at someone right now in your workplace. People are working against you, trying to work you out. Don't focus on the people that are working against you. Don't focus on the business people that are trying to get you out of your contract. I'm here to tell you this morning that the same God who was with Mordecai is the same God who is with you this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. While Haman is working on your gallow, God is working on your promotion. So get your heart set on God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I don't care if they are starving the lions in order so that the lions can feast on you. You are not lion's food. You are not lion's meat. Praise God. God has already sent his angels well in advance. So let them plot all that they want to. When you get into the lion's den, the lion's appetite will change. He, the lion will no longer become, he will no longer be a meat eater. The lion will become a herbivore. You will be undesirable. Because of God, hallelujah, God has got you covered, God has got your back, it doesn't matter what fire you are going through, you can look at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, when they threw them into the fiery furnace, you may be in a furnace this morning, but praise God, you have a fire on the inside that is bigger than the fire on the outside of you, and that fire that is on the inside of you will quench the fire without, you'll come out of there strong, you'll come out of there well, praise God, and healthy hallelujah praise god amen you'll be able to say look and see what the lord has done praise god hallelujah that's the god we serve god has got you covered friend and god god doesn't sleep the bible says the eyes of the lord run to and fro over the whole earth to show himself strong on those whose heart is loyal to him be loyal to god Hallelujah. Be loyal to God. God has got you covered. Whatever it is that you need, God has already made provision for that. Praise God. That's my word to you this morning. Because God watches over His word to perform it. I shared with you last week, you are a word from God. God is watching over your life. And He's about to perform it in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't allow the world around you to bury you. Don't allow the world around you to bury your dreams. Because that's what the world wants to do, is to bury you. But praise God, you are a seed from God. A seed that has been designed and planted in a time such as now. In a time such as this. Hallelujah, right now throughout the whole world. We are on lockdown. <laughs> but praise God, the church of Jesus Christ is not on lockdown. We are the church. What the enemy doesn't realize is that, yes, you may think that you've buried us. But what do you do with a seed? You bury it. You bury it so that it can grow. And I believe that in this time, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are growing as the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are people that are breaking out of their shells. They are breaking out of their limitations. And a seed, listen, you are a seed, you are in, you are in transition. You are about to change. There's things that you didn't know about yourself that you've discovered in this time of lockdown. That when the time comes, praise God, that everything, that when you are released now, you can go 
out with the power that you've received now. You can go out with the revelation that you have now. You are not going by information that has been fed to you by the world. You are going by revelation of the truth of God's word. Because it's the truth of the word. It's the truth of the gospel that sets you free. And I believe right now in this hour, you are being loosed into your destiny. You are being loosed into your God given assignment. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you can stand to your feet this morning and you can say praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus and God has got a destiny for you. God has got a plan for you. God has got an assignment with your life. So fulfill that assignment. Fulfill, fulfill that destiny. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I trust that you've received this morning from the word of God. And I want to encourage you right now. Friend. Take the word of God. Apply it in your life. You may be somebody. I'm seeing somebody now this morning. The, the challenges that you faced in life. You have faced lots of things in your life. Life has kind of chopped you down. That you, you, you understand that you feel like you've been cut down. But the book of Job says, there is hope for a tree when it is cut down. At the first scent of water, it will bud forth again. So you may be in a situation this morning where you've been cut down. But the word of God is there. This is the water that is needed for you. You will grow by this word. There, you have a second opportunity, a second chance now. Don't let it slip by. Take the word of God and begin to apply it to every area of your life. And you'll begin to grow. Hallelujah. As the cedars of Lebanon. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you right now to say this prayer with me. It's a prayer of faith where you receive the Lord Jesus into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord Jesus, right now I open the door of my heart to you. I invite you to be my personal Lord and Savior. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to sit enthroned on the throne of my heart. And I receive you right now. I receive your free gift of eternal life. I thank you for your blood which has cleansed me of all unrighteousness and all sin. I declare from this moment on, I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' blessed name, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. I want to encourage you, if you've said that prayer, connect with a church in your local area. Connect with a church so that you can grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And now if you stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the blessing of Almighty God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with all of you both now and forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you for joining us once again. Trust that you've been blessed. Please write to us. The details are appearing on your screen. We love to hear from you. We love to connect with you. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, God bless you. We love you very much. We pray for you often. Keep those prayer requests coming. Keep those praise reports coming. We love to hear what God is doing in your life. Praise God. We love you. God bless you.